Well, why are you laughing? Because well, it's we, a comfort we don't blanket. We need a comfort blanket. I mean, the I think we do, if, actually. If you, why? I mean, it's so patronising and it's so that? unpatriotic to suggest that we need a uh, comfort blanket. Uh, I have never heard a good argument for the monarchy, and it certainly isn't a net positive. So you didn't see any positives about the Queen? There's no... Well, I mean, it's not about the Queen, it's about the monarchy. The well, she was the head of the monarchy and for, now we for, have, for 70 years. Right, but now we have... I mean, you saw, no, just to be clear, you saw no positives in the Queen. It's not about the Queen, it's about the monarchy. Well, I'm asking you about the Queen. Well, I don't really know her, and that's the problem. We don't know... Well, how old are you? None of us, none of us really... How old are you? 48. But none 48. Of us, so for 48 years of your life, she was your monarch. None of us monarch. really knew on, her. Don't, don't squirm off the no. old net here. No, but right? the issue is the monarchy. Did you not understand that she was one of the not, if the most respected people in the world? Well, I, I think that's disputable, but, I mean, the point is... Who the, was more respected well, than her? That's a silly argument. Well, give me a name. This is a deadline... A de give me a name. This is, I'm, this is a dead-end Sorry, argument. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the, the interview, but the I argument, ask questions, and your job is to answer them. The argument is... So if I ask you, monarchy. do you not see any positives in the Queen, you'd say no. So I want us to watch this P.S. Morgan video, and then we can comment or react so let's watch. I'm a Republican. Uh, I believe that we should be citizens first, not subjects. So we'd keep the monarchy for a period of time, but then I'd hope Scotland, an independent Scotland, would move to be a Republican in the future. Well, since then, Mr Yousaf has doubled down on his statement, promising to give the Scottish people a vote on whether to have a monarch or an elected head of state within five years. And then independent Scotland is not the only threat to the monarchy. The late Queen was emphatically more popular than King Charles, for now anyway. And young people are much less enthusiastic about the monarchy. Um, first, I have to say this, right? Uh, the royal family or the monarchy, whatever they call them, shouldn't be head of state um, for any country, OK? Every country should be able to elect or to choose who they want to represent them. And I know most people will argue that the royal family or the king or the queen is just a ceremonial position. But I really do not think that. I think they have soft power. They have a lot of things they control behind the scenes. He is clearly not a monarchist and clearly thinks we should just get rid of the monarchy. Do you agree with him? I think he's probably right. I mean, it was different. When I was first minister, the queen was head of state. It had to be insane to, to suggest replacing Her Majesty the Queen because of her long service, her popularity, her wisdom. We're a different situation now. And it's quite interesting. If you ask people in Scotland, do you want to keep the monarchy or get a republic, you'll probably get a majority for the monarchy. If you ask the question, if you're setting up an independent Scotland, a new country, should you start with an elected head of state? Then the answer's quite different. You shouldn't. You should move to a, an elected head of state as opposed to the hereditary principle. So, Well, I would certainly think that uh, people love the whole idea to be able to choose their leader, right? And I know many countries, um, the leaders we choose sometimes can be terrible, can be as bad as you could ever think of. But the whole, I, the whole notion of you being able to choose your leader is a great thing, that... If someone comes in and is unable to really, well, except in Africa that they don't go anywhere, but the point is, the general idea is that if someone comes in and he or she is unable to deliver, then we can easily kick them out and then bring in another person. But as far as the royal family is concerned, you cannot kick out the monarch, right? No matter what they do, they stay in power. And you cannot even question their decisions, right? Because you have no right to do that. And the notion of us, the notion of the people being a subject to His Majesty or Her Majesty, it's a whole thing altogether to think about, right? And that is why many people are like, uh, do we really need them? Like, what purpose are they really serving, you know? We know they attend a lot of these um, seminars, they give talks, they visit places, they have, uh, like, uh, NGOs, a lot of things. But really, do we really need them? And stuff like that, <laughs> you know? So there's a lot of mixed feelings when it comes to what role does the monarch actually play in today's society? And should we continue to keep them? Okay, if they're just for ceremonial purposes, then like, what's the point of keeping them? Do we really need it? But let's continue. Well, I, I think um, everyone knows by now uh, that Piers Morgan is very, very like um, 
pro royal, right? He is really for the royal family. In fact, he has made it his personal business to destroy Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, to deform them, to defame them, to like criticize them. He has made it his personal um, fight to make sure that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry would not go unnoticed. Like he has talked about them like every single time. When he's a guest speaker on any particular platform, he talks about them. I'm sure like he finds so much joy just criticizing them. <laughs> so he is so pro-monarch. So you should not be surprised to hear him say stuff like that. And I really believe that he believes in those things he talks about. Like he really believes that the royal family or the monarch serves a purpose in today's world. Which, um, if they really did, many people would not be like, uh, maybe we shouldn't have them. They wouldn't have even be a conversation like that. Like, do we need them or do we not need them? There is this ongoing debate about uh, if they cost too much or they bring in too much. Some people say that they cost too much because taxpayers have to fund their lifestyle and everything. And some other people are like, and they have a lot of properties and they bring in a lot of money in terms of tourism and stuff. So give or take, they are net positive. Like they, they, they balance up what they spend and what they bring in, kind of balance up. But it's an ongoing argument and no one has been able to really prove either one way. Like people are like both ways, right? Some people are like, yeah, they cost too much. Others are like, no, um, what they cost, they are able to bring back in terms of tourism and stuff. But let's hear what this guest is going to say. The argument is about, the discussion is not about which monarch is there, because the Queen's no longer there. So that, with that's respect our, to you, the argument, our history. discussion is whatever I decided it's going to be. That's right? our history. I'm the, asking you. We now have. I, you made King. a statement about, about the monarchy, and I said to you, did you see no positives from the Queen? I saw no positives having the Queen as a head of state. Right. Let's put it like you that. didn't now, see any see benefit no... to the country oh, in terms of the extraordinary esteem and respect she was held around the world. The fact that well, she met more presidents than anybody else. I don't think she meeting met more presidents. prime ministers. I, I actually, think... it makes a huge difference. It makes actually. no difference. Well, why don't you ask no the presidents? Why no don't difference. you ask all the presidents who queued but, up when she died but it, to pay full some actually, tribute? If we actually talk about the monarchy rather than the person. No, I want to talk about have... the Queen. Well, I have to say that is arguable. That is subjective. You cannot really say that someone is one of the most nicest or one of the most recognizable person in the world. It depends on what you mean by that, right? Uh, I think that the queen served for a very long time and she was known by many people and she must have met a lot of people, like many leaders all over the world. But that does not necessarily mean that she did a lot of things. I, I think that if you go to Kenya and ask them, they will have a very negative view or negative opinion about the queen. If you go to like Zimbabwe and also ask, you will hear something negative about the queen. So there are people who feel like, yeah, maybe she didn't really do what she was supposed to do, you know? And many things were required from her. Like many people required her to do something and she didn't do it. Like apologize to the victims of colonialism and colonization. And she didn't do that. So there are a lot of things that people would like argue about. And uh, I, I think that sometimes the opinions of the leader, especially from Africa, because I'm from Africa and I know uh, what actually goes on there. So the opinions of the leaders in Africa or from Africa will be quite different from the opinions of the common people. Because the leaders need to give a very good response or need to give a very positive remark about the queen because they know what they are getting from her or from her administration. Why the people don't really care because they don't get anything from the monarch as a whole, right? So they wouldn't even care that much. But I have to say this, as a person, I respect her. I think that she served her people. She might have done well, I'm, I don't know, I don't live in England. But the, the point is like her relationship to Africa in my opinion, was never a good thing. Yeah, was never a good thing. Africans do not have her in high regard. Africans do not think about her as someone who really did something great for Africans. I mean, the common people in Africa.
when you meet an African and you ask, right, the West, aka Britain, what did they do or what have they done for Africa? Or the ideas like democracy, freedom of speech, human rights that they wanted or that they brought to Africa, how is it being practiced in Africa? And then you come to realize that they did not do anything. In fact, they didn't succeed in actually implementing those ideas. What they succeeded in doing was kept authoritarian leaders in power that let them do whatever they want to do. And the common people still didn't benefit anything. So my whole take about this thing is like, we really do not need a royal family telling everyone what to do. I don't think it's really that important. I think uh, if people want to become or wants to be a republic or wants their country to be a republic, then it should be a republic. But you guys out there, what do you think about Pierre's remark about the queen and the institution that is the monarchy as a whole? Do you think that the monarchy did something great for Africans or like there are things we can pinpoint in Africa and said that this happened because of the queen. I mean, something positive, right? Not negative. Because if negative, you can say a lot of stuff in Africa that we can pinpoint that was done under the name of the queen and stuff like that. I'm talking about something positively that we can pinpoint and say that this was done because of the queen or because of the monarch. Let us know in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And please do not forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this YouTube channel because little bit of good we, like the one you are doing just now, help us a lot. I shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that. And like always, see you in the next one.